Hi, this is Dr. Brian Walsh with FatIsNotYourFault.com. We've all heard that stress is bad, but why is it bad? One of the reasons why is because during a stress response, your body produces a hormone called cortisol. It's made in your adrenal glands, and its primary role is to increase blood sugar. Now, you want high blood sugar during a stressful situation because blood sugar serves as a fuel source for the cells of your body to make something called ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. This is the energy of your cells to do what those cells do in order to get you out of a stressful situation. But high cortisol, if chronic, can lead to a number of negative things. So here's why you want to manage stress and high cortisol levels. One of the things that high cortisol will do, first of all, is it will break down muscle tissue. Muscle tissue is broken down because it's made up of proteins and amino acids. And I said that cortisol's primary job is to raise your blood sugar. How? Well, one is it will liberate stored glucose in the form of glycogen. Two is it will break down proteins into amino acids, which it can then convert into blood sugar. It can also break down fatty acids and make that into glucose or blood sugar as well. So one of the things that you see is a decrease in the amount of muscle that somebody has if they have a high amount of cortisol. This is problematic because with less muscle, you have less of your metabolic, uh, metabolic rate. Lower metabolic rate means less calorie burns at rest and means a, a, a higher likelihood that you might uh, gain fat. Speaking of fat, increased cortisol actually burns fat, which sounds great, but there's a number of other things that can happen which can actually build fat. So it burns your peripheral fat, but it increases what's called visceral fat. And visceral adipose tissue, or visceral fat, is well known to be a contributor to things like insulin resistance and diabetes. Visceral fat is known to secrete a number of different pro-inflammatory molecules that can increase your body's inflammation, which can cause a number of other issues. In fact, when you have inflammation, that's a stress, and that can release more cortisol as well. Another thing that will happen is you can have increased cravings and appetite. This is because if you have high cortisol, it's likely because there's some kind of stressful situation. And if it's a stressful situation, you need glucose to fuel your brain and your body to get out of a stressful situation. So one of the things that high cortisol will do is it will increase your cravings and increase your appetite. You'll tend to want to eat more and of the wrong stuff. Because typically, those sweets, for example, or more food will contribute to more glucose so that you have more glucose available for the stressful response. Another thing that the that cortisol can do is something in your gut or your gastrointestinal system called secretory IgA. Secretory IgA is your immune protective mucus layer, if you will, throughout your entire gastrointestinal tract. It prevents or protects you from things like uh, gastrointestinal infections or dysbiosis, or if you have food sensitivities. Decreased secretory IgA has been shown to cause something called leaky gut or intestinal permeability, which allows food that hasn't been completely broken down into your bloodstream, which again is a stress and causes uh, increased cortisol response. As I mentioned before, one of the things that glucose does is it increases your blood sugar. So if you have increased blood sugar, you will also therefore increase insulin levels to help deal with that blood sugar. Increased insulin therefore leads to things like insulin resistance. And insulin by itself can actually uh, through some immune system molecules, therefore also stimulate more cortisol. Another thing that you have is high cortisol will break down bone as well. So you can have an increased risk for osteoporosis. Another thing that cortisol do is it will stimulate part of your immune system called your Th2. This is your antibody producing immune system. This, uh, when it's elevated, suppresses your another part of your immune system that actually acts against things like cancer and infections. So you, it suppresses the anti-infection part of your immune system and stimulates or upregulates the part that makes antibodies. The problem with that is if you have something like leaky gut, now you have more antibodies, which can now act on some of those things that are contributing uh, to your immune response, which then causes an increased tr stress response as well and more cortisol. Now in your brain, high cortisol can also decrease uh, frontal lobe activity. Frontal lobe of your brain is associated with your personality. It's associated with things like working memory and your ability to concentrate. And in some people it's considered to be your intelligence, for example. Uh, also, so when you have decreased frontal lobe activity, you can have things like depression, for example. Um, as well as you can have a harder time concentrating. Another thing that high cortisol will do is it will damage part of your brain called your hippocampus. Your hippocampus is associated with converting short-term to long-term memory. 
And when you get decreased hippocampus function, that's the early signs of Alzheimer's, for example. So if somebody can remember their wedding but not what they had for lunch yesterday, that's an indication that maybe their hippocampus isn't working as well. And one of the potential causes may be that the uh, cortisol has been breaking it down. Another thing that high cortisol do, will do is suppress your pituitary gland. Your pituitary gland makes a number of hormones that tell other hor glands in your body to make hormones. So for example, now the pituitary gland tells your adrenal glands to make cortisol. It tells your thyroid gland to make thyroid hormone. In women, it tells the ovaries to make estrogen and progesterone. And in men, it tells the testes to make luteinizing hormone or testosterone. The pituitary also makes things like growth hormone. So with high cortisol, you can get a suppression of all these things as well. So there is more, but this is a few of the ways that high cortisol can cause negative impacts in your body and why nowadays more than ever we need to help modulate and deal with our stress as well as get uh, cortisol levels tested and if it's high to take the appropriate nutritional strategies in order to try to lower, that, lower it. I hope this has been helpful and uh, have a wonderful day.